subscribe to the channel and also press the bell icon to never miss an update from Endeavor Careers. Hello and welcome to Endeavor's GK Capsule for the month of June 2022. In this edition, we will discuss the ongoing political crisis in Maharashtra that has resulted in toppling of the existing government, massive protests that erupted across the nation amidst the controversial remarks on Prophet Muhammad made by suspended BJP spokesperson Nupur Sharma, Ukraine's accession to EU and other such news. The first category is Awards and Recognition. Indian tennis champion Vijay Amritraj has been named the 2021 recipient of the Golden Achievement Award by the International Tennis Hall of Fame and International Tennis Federation in recognition of his outstanding impact on tennis as a player, promoter and humanitarian. He is the first recipient from India and he joins an esteemed list of tennis leaders who have received the honour, including Brian Tobin of Australia, Eiji Kawatai of Japan and Pichi Kelmeyer of the United States. Former Karnataka Chief Minister S.M. Krishna, Infosys founder and IT industry veteran N.R. Narayan Murthy, and former badminton player Prakash Padukone have been selected for the Kempegoda International Award, which has been instituted beginning this year. Chief Minister Baswaraja Bomai presented the awards to recipients during the grand celebration on the 513th birth anniversary of Kempegoda, the architect of Bengaluru City, on 27th June at Vidhan Sauda. Tata Group Chairman Emeritus Ratan Tata has been conferred honorary D.Lit by Maharashtra's second state cluster university, HSNC University, as a mark of appreciation towards his unparalleled contribution for the society. The Governor of Maharashtra and the Chancellor of the University, Bhagat Singh Koshyari, awarded the degree to Tata at a special convocation ceremony of the university. Our next section is Persons in News. After Sharil Sandberg announced her departure from Meta, previously Facebook, after 14 years, CEO Mark Zuckerberg announced Xavier Oliven as the next COO of the company. Oliven joined Meta in 2007 as the head of international growth. Recently, he served as Chief Growth Officer and under that position, he managed features and functions across Facebook, Instagram, WhatsApp and Messenger. As COO, he will continue to lead infrastructure and corporate development while also being responsible for advertising and business products. United States President Joe Biden has nominated Dr. Arti Prabhakar as the Director of the Office of Science and Technology Policy, which is OSTP, making her the first female immigrant to lead OSTP. An American engineer born in New Delhi and raised in Texas, Prabhakar secured a Master of Science in Electrical Engineering in 1980 and a PhD in Applied Physics in 1984, both from the California Institute of Technology, becoming the first woman to achieve a PhD in Applied Physics from Caltech. Prabhakar was appointed the head of National Institute of Standards and Technology by President Bill Clinton in 1993. Prabhakar will be replacing Eric Lander, who resigned in February. Shiv Sena MLA Eknath Shinde took oath as the new Chief Minister of Maharashtra, while Bharatiya Janta Party's Devendra Fadnavis has been appointed as the Deputy Chief Minister of Maharashtra. The state was caught up in a dramatic stalemate as Shiv Sena leader and State Minister Eknath Shinde revolted against the current Mahavikas Aghadi government, demanding the party quits the alliance it shares with Congress and the Nationalist Congress Party. The former CM Uddhav Thakre resigned from his post on 29th June following the Supreme Court rejection of MVA government's plea seeking a stay-on-floor test in the Maharashtra Assembly to prove majority. On 24th June 2022, retired IAS officer Parmeshwaran Ayer was appointed as the new CEO of Niti Aayog by Union Government. He is a 1981 batch IAS officer from UP Cadder. 
He will replace Amitabh Kant and become the third chief executive officer of the public policy think tank of the government. Niti Aayog is the apex public policy think tank of Government of India that catalyzes economic development and fosters cooperative federalism by involving state governments in economic policy making process. In other news, Ruchira Kamboj has been appointed as the next permanent representative of India to the United Nations. She is currently Indian ambassador to Bhutan. She started her diplomatic journey in Paris, France, being posted as the third secretary in Indian embassy to France during 1989 to 91. She has also been Indian high commissioner in South Africa, permanent representative of India to UNESCO in Paris, and chief of protocol in New Delhi. Ruchira Kamboj will succeed T.S. Tirumurthy. Moving on to our next section, places in news. Turkey will now be known as Turkey at the United Nations. After the intergovernmental body agreed to a formal request for the name change from Ankara, the campaign to rebrand as Turkey began in December 2021 when the country's president Rajab Tayyab Erdogan issued a statement saying the word Turkey represents and expresses the culture, civilization and values of the Turkish nation in the best way. The Supreme Court in June dismissed a batch of petitions against excavation and construction work by the Odisha government along the Puri Jagannath Temple as a part of the Puri Heritage Corridor project, calling the pleas frivolous. The petitioners alleged that the construction work would damage the heritage site. The Puri Corridor project came into controversy when government agencies dug huge pits within 100 meters from the boundary of the temple, which is categorized as a protected zone, without getting permission from Archaeological Survey of India. The Jagannath Temple is a centrally protected monument and ASI is its custodian. Thus, 100 meters around the perimeter of the temple is considered as inviolate, where no construction can be taken in accordance with the ancient monuments and archaeological sites and remains act, unless National Monuments Authority gives a nod to it. NMA had issued a no-objection certificate in 2021 for the construction of a shelter pavilion, cloakroom, toilets, etc. within the prohibited 75-meter zone based on the fact that public amenities do not come under definition of construction. The Mekedatu Water Project has been again in news with the Karnataka High Court staying the operation of the charge sheet filed against Congress leaders including former Chief Minister Sidra Maya and party state president D.K. Shivakumar accused of violating COVID-19 protocols. The charge sheet was filed in the case pertaining to the Padyatra led by the two leaders demanding construction of the Mekedatu Dam across the river Kaveri. The Kaveri River is both a lifeline and a topic of dispute for neighbours Tamil Nadu and Karnataka. Apart from the conflict over the regular release of water, the construction of the Mekedatu Dam across the river has also been a controversial issue. Tamil Nadu opposes the construction of the dam and Karnataka wants an early implementation. Moving on to the major highlights in the category of national news, massive protests erupted across the country including in Delhi, Ranchi and some other cities in UP last month over controversial remarks on Prophet Muhammad made by now suspended BJP spokesperson Nupur Sharma and her former colleague Naveen Jindal. Outrage in India gained fresh momentum after leaders of several Muslim nations including Qatar, Saudi Arabia, United Arab Emirates, Oman, Indonesia, Malaysia, Pakistan, Iran and Afghanistan demanded apologies from New Delhi and summoned diplomats to protest against the remarks. India has since clarified that the controversial remarks on Prophet Muhammad were made by fringe elements and that they did not reflect the views of the government. Following the row, it has been reported that several radical Islamists have been issuing threats for extending support to former BJP spokesperson Nupur Sharma.
beheading of a hindu man in udaipur and the murder of another person in maharashtra's amravati is alleged to have been committed by a radical islamic group over the victim's social media posts in support of nupur sharma the national investigation agency is investigating both the cases India has raised its basic import duty on gold to 12.5% from 7.5%. The government said in a notification as the world's second biggest consumer of the precious metal tries to dampen its demand. India fulfills most of its gold demand through imports which were putting pressure on the rupee which hit a record low last month. The tax hike comes on the back of a widening current account, the broadest measure of trade. It is now nearly double the level seen in the previous year. In other news, the government raised export duty on diesel by rupees 13 per liter and that on petrol by rupees 6 per liter. The government also imposed a cess of rupees 6 per liter on exports of ATF. According to the finance ministry the objective to increase the taxes is to increase the domestic availability of fuel however it will not impact the domestic prices as per the statement issued the government also slapped the rupees 23230 per ton additional tax on domestically produced crude oil to take away windfall gains accruing to producers from high international oil prices a separate government notification showed Apart from this the cabinet has approved the deregulation of the sale of domestically produced crude oil from 1st October conditions in production sharing contracts PSC to sell crude oil to the government or its nominee or government companies will be waived this essentially means producers will be free to sell oil from their fields in the domestic market at present the central government decides which state run refinery gets how much crude from each producer post this the price will be worked out on a traditional formula with brent as a marker instead of the global practice of a five cut or yield of five most used refined products norm Next we have major highlights in the category of international news. It's been 4 months since Russia invaded Ukraine on 24th Feb with a resolution nowhere in sight. The key developments this month have been that Ukrainian troops were ordered to retreat from Severodonetsk in the eastern Luhansk region making way for a big win for Russia. Russia captured the city of Lysychansk and now controls the whole Luhansk region. Russian officials have said their forces are fighting for the complete liberation of the Donbas which broadly refers to Ukraine's eastern regions of Donetsk and Luhansk where Russian backed separatists held significant territory before the invasion Russian troops have continued to shell Ukrainian positions across the southern regions of Zaporizhia Kherson Mykolaiv and Dnipropetrovsk Russian forces initially made rapid gains in the south with their main objective being the creation of a land corridor between Crimea which it annexed in 2014 and areas held by Russian backed separatists in Donetsk and Luhansk but strong resistance from Ukrainian forces near Mykolaiv in the west and in Mariupol significantly slowed Russian advances Russia was initially successful in holding on to Snake Island in the Black Sea and using air defenses stationed there to protect Russian naval vessels blockading the Ukrainian coast and hindering Ukraine's maritime trade. However, Russia announced the withdrawal of its forces from the island on 30th June. In a move to further tighten the sanctions on Russia, members of the group of seven wealthy nations announced a ban on imports of Russian gold. The move by Britain, the US, Japan and Canada is a part of efforts to cut off Russia's means of financing the invasion of Ukraine. Ukraine's allies have already prohibited most trade with Russia, frozen hundreds of billions of dollars of assets belonging to the Bank of Russia held in their own financial institutions and blocked Russian banks from using the messaging system known as SWIFT that undergirds the system of international payments. 
On 23rd June, the European Council granted Ukraine the status of a candidate for accession to the European Union. On 28th February 2022, shortly after it was invaded by Russia, Ukraine had applied for membership of the EU. Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky requested immediate admission under a new special procedure and the presidents of eight EU states called for an accelerated accession process. On 17th June 2022, the European Commission recommended that the European Council grant Ukraine candidate status for accession to the European Union. Simultaneously, with the recommendation to approve the status of the candidate, Brussels put forward demands to Kiev for reforms, providing a list of seven points. These requirements must be met in order for Ukraine to maintain candidate status because the granting of a status in June 2022 is not final and the EU can revoke if the Ukrainian government does not make progress on the reform agenda. In a surprising ruling, the US Supreme Court struck down a New York law that required a person to prove they had legitimate self-defense needs to receive a gun permit. The justices said the requirement violates the Second Amendment right to keep and bear arms. The justices' 6-3 decision follows a series of recent mass shootings and is expected to ultimately allow more people to legally carry guns on the streets of the nation's largest cities including New York, Los Angeles and Boston and elsewhere. About a quarter of the U.S. population is expected to be affected by the ruling, the High Court's first major gun decision in more than a decade. President Biden signed into law a bipartisan gun bill intended to prevent dangerous people from accessing firearms and increase investments in the nation's mental health system, ending nearly three decades of gridlock in Washington over how to address gun violence in the United States. The gun legislation will expand the background check system for prospective gun buyers under the age of 21, giving authorities up to 10 business days to examine juvenile and mental health records. It sets aside millions of dollars so states can fund intervention programs such as mental health and drug courts and carry out so-called red flag laws that allow authorities to temporarily confiscate guns from any person found by a judge to be too dangerous to possess them. The next category is news from the field of business, economy and industrial sector. The Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development has joined the World Bank and sharply slashed the growth for India to 6.9% in financial year 23 from 8.1% estimated earlier. This is below the Reserve Bank of India's estimate of a 7.2% rise. India's gross domestic product grew 8.7% in 2021-22, making it the fastest growing major economy in the world. After recording the strongest GDP rebound in the G20 in 2021, the Indian economy is progressively losing momentum as inflationary expectations remain elevated due to rising global energy and food prices, monetary policy normalizes and global conditions deteriorate, OECD said in the report. Similarly, the domestic rating agency Crisil has also lowered its real GDP growth forecast for India to 7.3% in FY23 from 7.8% estimated earlier, though keeping it in line with RBI's estimate. It attributed the downward revision to higher oil prices, slowing of export demand and high inflation. Crisil said there are a slew of negatives like high commodity prices, elevated freight prices, drag on exports as global growth projections get lowered and the largest demand side driver of private consumption remaining weak. The only bright spots are the uptick in contact intensive services and forecast of a normal and well-distributed monsoon. 
After a surprise rate hike in May in an off-cycle meeting, the six-member Monetary Policy Committee of the Reserve Bank of India unanimously voted to increase the benchmark policy rate by 50 basis points, thereby taking the repo rate to 4.90%. RBI Governor Shakti Kanta Das stated that inflation had steeply increased beyond the upper tolerance level, adding that upside risks to inflation as highlighted in last policy meetings had materialized earlier than expected. RBI had revised its inflation projection for FY23 to 6.7% from 5.7% earlier. The MPC, however, retained the real GDP projection for FY2022-23 at 7.2%. The Reserve Bank of India issued a notification last month disallowing non-bank prepaid wallets and prepaid cards from loading credit lines, preset borrowing limits into these platforms. This comes in the backdrop of a boom in credit instruments such as fintech-driven credit cards and buy-now-pay-later wallets. The banking regulator has clarified that its master direction on prepaid payment instruments does not permit loading of PPIs from credit lines, a practice being undertaken by several fintech credit card companies. These companies typically tie up with banks or NBFCs and offer credit lines into their prepaid wallets. SR Power Limited has entered into a definitive agreement with Adani Transmission Limited to sell one of its two transmission lines for 1913 crore rupees. SR had commissioned the transmission line in two phases between the years 2013 and 2018 at the cost of 2400 crore rupees. Last June, the company sold its 1200 megawatt Mahan Power project at Singrauli to Adani Power for around 3,000 crore rupees. SR Power has a current power generating capacity of 2,070 megawatts across four plants in India and Canada. The company added that it has been in the process of curating a green balance sheet around renewable energy which is in line with its strategy of investing in future-centric businesses which give a superior rate of return within the ESG which is Environmental Social Corporate Governance Framework. Moving on to our next category, Meetings and Summits, Prime Minister Sri Narendra Modi led India's participation at the 14th BRICS Summit convened under the chairship of President Xi Jinping of China on 23rd-24th June 2022 in a virtual format. President Jair Bolsonaro of Brazil, President Vladimir Putin of Russia and President Cyril Ramaphosa of South Africa also participated in the summit. Prime Minister Modi called for strengthening of the BRICS identity and proposed establishment of online database for BRICS documents, BRICS Railways Research Network and strengthening cooperation between MSMEs. India will be organizing BRICS startup event this year to strengthen connection between startups in BRICS countries. Prime Minister also noted that as BRICS members, we should understand security concerns of each other and provide mutual support in designation of terrorists and this sensitive issue should not be politicized. The United States and other major nations came into an agreement at their Group of Seven Summits conclusion to concentrate on China's growing threats, despite the fact that the three-day meeting's most pressing issue was Russia's conflict in Ukraine. In a communique, the G7 countries articulated a plan for challenging Beijing regarding its economic policies and human rights violations. The plan calls on G7 leaders to raise $600 billion over five years to fund the launch of infrastructure projects in middle and low-income countries. The U.S. has promised to raise $200 billion, which is £162 billion, of the total through grants, federal funds and private investment, while the EU has announced a further €300 billion, Euros, which is £257 billion. The initiative will be geared towards tackling climate change, improving global health, achieving gender equity and building digital infrastructure. The 2022 NATO Madrid Summit 
was held in Madrid, Spain from 28th to 30th June 2022. This was the 32nd edition of the summit since the first summit meeting held in Paris in 1957. Allied leaders agreed on a fundamental shift in NATO's deterrence and defence, with strengthened forward defences, enhanced battle groups in the eastern part of the alliance and an increase in the number of high readiness forces to well over 3 lakhs. Leaders also agreed to invest more in NATO and to increase common funding. During the summit, NATO's closest partners, Finland and Sweden, were invited to join the alliance, a significant boost to Euro-Atlantic security. Moving on to our next category, Science and Technology. The Large Hadron Collider, a 27-kilometer circular tunnel in Geneva, is ready to smash protons at record levels of energy. The collider is expected to produce 18 million Higgs-Boston particles during each experiment as physicists look for the elusive dark matter, extra dimensions and explore the concept of the multiverse. The new set of experiments comes after three years of a shutdown at the European Organization for Nuclear Research, CERN, during which physicists from across the world worked to enhance the facility for higher energy collisions. Ten years ago, on 4th July 2012, scientists at CERN had announced to the world the discovery of the Higgs-Boston or the God particle during the LHC's first run. The discovery concluded the decade-long quest for the force-carrying subatomic particle and proved the existence of the Higgs mechanism, a theory put forth in the mid-60s. Moving on to our next category of sports, the e-auction for the media rights to the Indian Premier League seasons 2023-27 was conducted from 12th June 2022 to 14th June. The successful bidders acquired the media rights for a cumulative figure of 48,390.32 crore Indian rupees. Disney's star has retained the Indian Premier League's television rights for the Indian subcontinent for the 2023-27 cycle in a deal worth 235.75 billion Indian rupees, which is $3.02 billion. Digital rights for the annual 2020 tournament went to Viacom 18 for 237.58 billion Indian rupees, which is $3.05 billion. According to the Indian Cricket Board, after the sale of media rights of IPL 23-27, IPL will rise to number 2 league in the world from being at the 4th position currently. Indian legend Vishwanathan Anand continued his winning run in the classical section of the Norway chess tournament as he defeated China's Wang Hao in the third round to remain on top of the standings. The 52-year-old Anand won the Armageddon, which is sudden death game, after the regular classical match was drawn after 39 moves. In other news, Rahul Srivastava P of Telangana has become India's 74th Grand Master, achieving the title after breaking the 2500 ELO points barrier in live FIDE ratings during the 9th Catholica Chess Festival 2022 in Italy. The 19-year-old player reached the 2500 live rating mark after drawing his 8th round game against Grandmaster Leva and Pansulaya in the Catholica event. Javelin ace Neeraj Chopra won the gold medal at the QR10 Games in Finland after registering a throw of 86.69 million on his first attempt. He finished ahead of Trinidad and Tobago's Keshawn Walcott and world champion Anderson Peters of Grenada. Indian women cricket legend and captain Mithali Raj has announced her retirement from all forms of the game. Mithali, who made her debut for India in 1999, went on to become one of the greatest players to ever play the game and ended her career as the leading run scorer in all three formats in women's cricket. The 37-year-old last played international cricket in March this year in the 2022 Women's World Cup, where she led the Indian team. However, the women in blue couldn't make it to the semi-finals. 
Under Mithali, Indian women's cricket made some giant strides on the global cricketing map, the biggest one being making it to the final of the 2017 Women's World Cup final against England at Lords. This brings us to the end of this month's edition of GK Capsule. We hope you liked the coverage of topics in our monthly editions. Do also watch our other online videos. Happy learning! Thank you!